for this city. As the city grows, the flow of people in and out of downtown needs to be addressed. Any real estate that's close to public transit, whether it's residential or office or retail, doubles its chance for success. And so the city's obligation is to build, moving forward, is to build a great transit system. And hopefully that will help alleviate the parking issue. The three newest office buildings do include parking, but it's not a city requirement. The new South Bridge is expected to improve downtown traffic congestion and make Idlewild Drive more attractive to development. Even ICR is expanding. New offices, it just draws more people to downtown and it makes it more vibrant and I mean people want to come down here. The city says stay tuned. There are at least another half dozen big projects in the works for the downtown, warehouse and Broadway areas. Jennifer Jellicoe, CTV News, Saskatoon. Saskatoon's garbage collection schedule is changing and there's been some confusion as to when it takes effect. The city sent out new calendars outlining the changes, however, the schedule for December 2011 is incorrect. The changes actually take effect in January. Beginning January 1st, 44 neighborhoods will have a new collection day while 15 will remain the same. The city says the changes will save money and time. Well, this is World AIDS Day. It's a day dedicated to battling the deadly disease, and this evening residents who've been impacted by the illness came together for support. They lit candles in memory of loved ones past or for people who are currently living with the sickness. Saskatchewan has the highest rate of HIV in the country, and Saskatoon has seen the biggest share of that increase. AIDS Saskatoon says they have lost 22 people to AIDS between January and August this year. Tonight is a time they cherish to remember those they've lost. I come here uh, with uh, gratitude that I did have a son. Uh, he was very young when he died. And uh, just to be amongst others that have experienced or are experiencing the same thing. Uh, and it's to honor him. He was a pioneer. Still to come, the New Democrats take the seats in the legislature under new leadership. And a new affordable housing project gets underway in Prince Albert. Well, a fire has destroyed a barn southeast of Saskatoon. Firefighters were called to a farm just north of the Corman Park Airport at about 9.30 this morning. When they arrived, a barn and a bobcat were engulfed in flames. The barn contained tools and machinery. No animals or people were injured in the blaze. Investigators think they know how the fire started. <laughs> The, the, the owner uh, believes it, it started with the bobcat sitting beside the building. They, he plugged it in this morning, and, um, and when they came out, that's where the fire uh, was burning most uh, intensely, and it caught the building on fire. Meanwhile, RCMP are investigating what appears to be a murder in Fort Capel. At around 2.45 this morning, RCMP received a report that a 22-year-old man had been stabbed during a house party. He was taken to hospital in Fort Capel, but later died. Nearly two dozen officers are working on the investigation. The victim has been identified as Joseph Lyle Belgard of Regina. An autopsy will be conducted to determine the exact cause of his death. So far, no arrests have been made. Well, it was the New Democrats' turn at the legislature today after Saskatchewan Party MLAs were sworn in yesterday. The nine NDP MLAs took their oaths of office and found their seats in the Legislative Assembly. It will be a much different session. The NDP lost 11 seats in the November provincial election, including former leader Duane Lingenfelter. John Nelson was sworn in as the opposition leader today. We're all quite excited about how we can do this, but there's no question that when each of us uh, have the critic roles for about four or five different areas that uh, we're going to have a number of challenges. John Nelson will lead the new Democrats in the House until the party selects a new leader, probably next year. Well, a new development in Prince Albert is taking advantage of the government's Head Start on a Home program. But as Ben Milliger reports, there are some in the community who say more needs to be done to address the housing needs of the people on social assistance. With the turn of a shovel by Mayor Jim Scarrow, 63 housing units are now under construction in Prince Albert as part of the province's Head Start program to make owning a home more affordable. 
What we try and do, though, is again just make it more attainable for everybody, um, so that alleviates. Um, what we're finding is that um, you know people that that don't make enough can't or make too much can't afford for uh, don't qualify for affordable housing. But some people in Prince Albert are more concerned with day-to-day -day survival, and for them, owning a condo is not an attainable goal. I find it hard to eat sometimes because I'm constantly worrying about my baby's diapers and formula. I think they should pay attention to maybe getting uh, building places uh, with aff affordable rates, set rates that people like me can afford because I only get 500 a month from welfare for a place and as you can see I have to settle for a place like that. Well pleased with the Head Start program, Brian Howell says it won't do much to alleviate the social housing crunch. Our units are, are full and certainly all of the social housing providers in Prince Albert will report that, that they are full. There's basically a zero vacancy rate in affordable housing. Prince Albert is a community with a diverse range of housing needs. And while the Head Start program will help some families transition from the rental market into their very own homes for the first time, it does not address the needs of people struggling to make ends meet month to month. And social housing advocates say those are the very people who need the most help now. Ben Milger, CTV News, Prince Albert. Well, it's time to take a look at weather, and that's something we cannot complain about. We got up to a high of uh, almost minus one degree today, sort of hovered around minus one, minus two. The radar and satellite map not showing any uh, flurries in our area today, but there is lots of cloud cover. Checking out the current temperatures, minus 10 in Uranium City, minus 11 in Stony Rapids, minus 8 in Key Lake. Very warm in Buffalo Narrows. They're sitting at one degree. LaRange is sitting at minus two. Our provincial capital, Regina, is at zero tonight. A little chillier near the U.S. border. Balmarie is sitting at minus five. Estevan, minus three. And uh, Yorkton there, uh, minus two. Here in Saskatoon, we are also sitting at zero, along with Prince Albert. North Battleford is beating us at one degree. The day ahead for North Battleford, minus two overnight. Flurries will be clearing a little bit, and uh, tomorrow they're looking for a high of zero degrees and partly cloudy skies. Looking at the long-range forecast for North Battleford, two degrees on Saturday, partly cloudy skies there. Three degrees and windy Sunday, minus two on Monday with a low of minus 13. And Tuesday, looking for a high of one degree. Checking out the day ahead for Prince Albert, they're looking for a 40% chance of flurries overnight here. Clear tomorrow, though, and a high of minus 2. Looking at their long-range forecast, Saturday, periods of snow, minus 1 is the high, but it's going to get pretty chilly there overnight, going down to minus 15. Sunday, looking for a high of 0. A little chillier there Monday, though, with minus 5. And Tuesday, looking to get back up to 0. Tomorrow here in the Bridge City, we're looking for a high of zero tomorrow. 60% chance of flurries sort of after the 6 o'clock time. Looking at our long-range forecast, those flurries will be clearing off Saturday. Partly cloudy skies, 1 degree. Sunday, looking for 2 degrees. Monday, minus 4. And then getting warmer yet again on Tuesday with a high of 2 degrees. Let's take a look outside, courtesy of our Affinity Credit Union Skycam. It's nice to uh, to be December 1st here, Pat, and not uh, almost have no snow on the ground. You know, I was going to ask, what's the deal? It got up really cold, I know. and now it's heating back up again. Is I this going to last? Uh, you know, for at least the next five days. Well, <laughs> things are heating up in the world of high school basketball, let me sure tell are. you. <laughs> the Bolt Classic taking place in the city. News break brought to you by Lotto Max. Next jackpot is an estimated $10 million. Save energy and money with the Saskatchewan Enter Guide for Houses program. Right now, you can apply for grants of up to $5,000 to make upgrades to your home, like installing a new furnace or insulation. These upgrades use less energy and help create a greener future. For more ways to go green and to learn about the Saskatchewan Inner Guide for Houses program, visit saskenergy.com. This is for you. Thanks. Oh. Uh, a little something for you. Thanks. you won't want to give up. What? Tim Horton's new China mug, only $7.99 with a packet of coffee or the reloadable quick pay Tim card. Get $150. Nah. Smart TVs from Leland. 
You can even go online and check traffic with it. Rudolph. Oh, yes, absolutely. Get the hottest gift of the season, the Samsung Galaxy Tab, on us when you activate any two of the latest new smartphones. Closed captioning brought to you by CTV News Mobile TV. Available on Bell Superphone, smartphones, and tablets. CTV is Saskatoon's number one news with Rob McDonald and Chantel Huber. Good evening, everyone. After starting the season of Perfect 10-0 at home this year, the Saskatoon Blades have dropped their last three straight at CUC in convincing fashion. Last night, the defending champion Kootenay Ice scored a 6-1 victory. And in the last three games, the Blades have been outscored 16-4, getting nothing done in the offensive zone and leading head coach Lauren Mulliken to call their defensive play horrendous. And they'll head out on the road for their next trio of games, which could be the best thing for the Wheeling squad. The teams that have come in here have played extremely hard, and, and we haven't, uh, our work ethic hasn't matched that. For us to be successful, we need everyone contributing right now. Um, you know, we're not, we're not playing to our strengths. We're not playing well as individuals, and, and as a result, our team play has suffered. Not holding each other accountable and playing our roles on the team. I think that's getting away from us, but I think in the next few games we're going to pull each other together, like trying to be positive in the dressing room still and come out next game strong. It'll be nice just to, to, to get away, you know, play play, uh, play some hard hard road games. Uh, we seem to seem to have been on a little bit of a roll there uh, on the road there before we came home and uh, just ended a long streak here and kind of starting one on, on the opposite end, which, is, which isn't good, so hopefully we can snap that here this weekend. And last night was the first time this season that goaltender Andre Makarov has been pulled after allowing four goals on 22 shots against. Makarov's name has been linked to the starting goaltender job for Russia at the upcoming World Junior Championships. And Team Canada's World Junior Camp invitees were named on Monday after being invited to the Summer Camp and the Subway Super Series. Blades captain Duncan Seaman's name left off the list. Uh, yeah, it's disappointing, but uh, you know what? I attended both the summer camp and the subway series, so they had, they had their chance to look at me. It turned out that uh, they didn't see a fit for me, and, and that's the decision they made. So I can't change that, and I just got to continue moving forward and, and keep playing here. We got uh, we got a lot left to do here. The Blades begin their three ranked sixth in the country. He can round up the round. Changing themselves. Bar and sign. Regina tries to get out of the net by Stephanie. The Bolt basketball tournament got underway this afternoon. The 32 teams split into two divisions, the gold and the orange. This evening, Holy Cross was taking on Walter Murray. We'll start in the third quarter. Brad Holman sets up at the top of the key and sinks an easy two to put the Crusaders makes it rain. Exactly how many shots are needed to make it rain on the net for two. Uh, Moose Jaw back on the attack. Katie Reedy to Stacy. So Ripple will get the ball. Animal shelters in. Ripple led 46-19 at halftime. However, 79-41 to 41 is the final in this one. Travis Silvestri, a game high, 24 points. So a pretty good game. For Tons of basketball. Tons of basketball. Lots. A weekend long, too, hey? And more, more tomorrow, and it ends on Saturday. Excellent. Do you think everyone recognized you without your mustache? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Uh, <laughs> dramatically different. <laughs> Still to come on CTV News, animal shelters in Prince Albert have reached their limits. How the SPCA is trying to give these pets homes for the holidays. They're innocent, loving. They struggle. And all your favorites or try one of their chef specialties convenient combos for one up to five makes it easy to order with free fast and reliable delivery service to your door call ming's kitchen for takeout or delivery 664-3141 you need a little inspiration <laughs> Shake up dinner with Old El Paso. Old El Paso, mucho pa tonight.
Prince Albert now, where the SPCA is bursting at the seams. The shelter is at capacity and is looking for people to adopt animals. Blair Farthing has more on efforts to find them a home in time for the holidays. With twice as many dogs and cats as there are kennels, the Prince Albert SPCA is at double capacity and can't take in any more until some of them find suitable homes. This SPCA is joining a worldwide campaign to adopt out 1.5 million dogs and cats this holiday season. People start to think of a pet, uh, the kids are out of school for their school break, parents are taking holidays and they have the time to spend with a pet right before Christmas and over Christmas. That's good news for little guys like Marv, Lewis and Molson who will tell you themselves they're ready for a loving home this holiday season. Those interested in adoption should know that there are more than just puppies and kittens. There are many benefits to adopting an older pet who may already have basic training. It's great to adopt an adult dog too because a lot of times people will say, oh, I don't know the history behind it. But you know, a lot of times they're, if they're nice, it doesn't matter what kind of history they have, that that's their personality. And the SBCA isn't just for those looking to get new pets, it's also for those searching for lost ones. It's just really important that people come and file a lost report if they've lost their pet. Because all of these pets here are owned by somebody, but nobody has come searching for them yet. The SBCA is open every day, so anyone can stop in and get a new family member like Asia here. The perfect gift this holiday season for both the family and the animal who gets a loving home. Blair Farthing, CTV News, Prince Albert. Well, a rare painting that has hung in Prince Albert City Council chambers for years is getting a facelift. The picture, believed to be painted by Italian artist Cyrus Cineo, is more than 100 years old. It's been hanging at City Hall in Prince Albert for decades and was recently sent to the Mann Art Gallery to be cleaned and restored. The painting depicts Sir George Simpson on his tour from Hudson's Bay to the Pacific Coast. It was originally commissioned for the Canadian Pacific Railway. The director of the gallery says it's a painstaking task to restore the picture of this size. You ever see a Red Rider give up? Or Roy or Gene or Hoppy? Of course not. The stage version of the classic holiday movie, A Christmas Story, runs until December 18th at Ramey Arts Centre. For tickets, call the Persephone Theatre box office. I remember the boys used to try and press me when we put those on dry ass. Cookums in Toyland is the latest in the Res Christmas series from the Saskatchewan Native Theatre Company. It plays until December 10th at La Troupe du Jour Production Centre. To book your tickets, call the Persephone Theatre box office at 384-7727. Ah, I'm sure you'd rather be alone. What, what, you're going? Yes. You have until Saturday, December 3rd to take in The Love List, the latest offering from Prince Albert's Odyssey Productions. Call 922-ACTS for tickets. Tom Jackson's Twas in the Moon of Wintertime tour lands at Knox United Church on Monday, December 5th. The concert supports the Denny Carr Secret Santa and St. Andrew's College. Tickets are available at St. Andrew's, McNally Robinson, or at the door. Picture perfect memories scattered all around the floor. Lady Antebellum and special guests Darius Rucker and Thompson Square are coming to Credit Union Center on March 14th. Tickets go on sale Monday, December 5th at 10 a.m. Michelle Wright brings her I'm Dreaming of a Wright Christmas tour to the Dakota Dunes Casino on December 11th. You can ring in the new year at the casino with David Lee Murphy. After Hours, brought to you in part by the Dakota Dunes Casino. Excitement lives here. is a big family. It's people who have amputations like me. My prosthetic limbs, the warm gave me, helped me so much. I can run, I can horseback ride, I can swim. Your amputation doesn't hold you back. You can do whatever you want. Cleaning your feet can be quite a chore. Introducing the convenience of Easy Feet, a grooming accessory designed to clean and gently massage without the struggle. Simply secure it to any smooth shower or tub surface. Great for athletes, and the kids will love it. Give your feet a quick clean after gardening and feel refreshed all day. Change the way you bathe forever with the amazing Easy Feet, only $14.99 from Supertech. Available at these and other fine stores. DeKalb 73 Series Canola Hybrids, a new... 
focus. 555. And this isn't just a Falcon. This is a rock and roll Falcon. It's good to be back in Boston, Jaya! The Cheeseburger Lover's Deal. Old and flu symptoms. This is your moment. This is People's, the diamond store. Take up to an extra 15% off store-wide now through Tuesday. A Regina landmark is coming down. Demolition has begun on the Plains Hotel near downtown Regina. This historic hotel is being bulldozed to make way for a new hotel and condominium skyscraper. Developers say once complete, the new building will be the tallest in the province. Ooh. The building's iconic weather tower will be incorporated into the design of the building as well. Wow. And uh, what, is the, what is the tallest tower in Saskatchewan, anyhow? In you, Saskatchewan? Yeah. It's got to be something in Regina, I would think. You know so those... One of the hotels the, or something down there? Well, yeah. there's there's two buildings that they have the rider symbols on sometimes. I, think it's I that one, forget right? what they're called. But well, if you know, send us an email. Thanks yeah. so much for watching. <laughs> We'd really like to know. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> CTV.